man, these leaks are just kind of pouring out. It's becoming a waterfall. Does anyone remember when Apple said they were going to crack down on leaks for 2019? They were like, we're, we're going to try to be a bit more secure about what gets leaked out of the company. Eh, that could never have been so ironic now. There's a lot of things to cover today because there's been a lot of different iPhone leaks jumping all over the place. But the main thing, the primary fact you have to understand today is that Mac Dakara is literally drunk. That's a joke, but still, I thought it would make you laugh because he essentially is going, oh, no, 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 now there's a 6.1 inch OLED model and the, the that one has a triple lens set up, but they're gonna get rid of all the 2018 ones and then release them again and then there will be three phones with dual cameras and, and they all have the A13 chip, but, but the new ones have the triple camera alongside the old ones, which are the same, but they have better chips on the inside, and th these are thicker, so that means that there's a 6.1 inch OLED display now, alongside a 6.1 inch LCD display now, so the form factors are totally different. Also an SE refresh, have you heard that one before? Anyways, all stuff we'll be getting into today starting now. So let's first talk about what Makatakara dropped on us this morning. He's essentially saying, for the first time ever, this is the first time we've heard this, there will be a 6.1 inch OLED model iPhone with the triple camera on the back to join the long rumored 6.5 inch iPhone 11 Max, whatever you want to call it, with a triple camera setup, with an OLED display. That one has always been the given, you know, we've kind of gone back and forth on, will both new sized iPhone 11s with OLED displays, will both of them get the triple camera or will just the plus model get the triple camera and we'll go back to iPhone 7 days where if you paid for the bigger phone you got more camera features or is Apple trying to keep it like they did in 2018 and make it so that you get the same camera regardless of what size iPhone you get this confuses all of that because he's claiming there will be two sizes that support the triple camera setup that will be released alongside a trio of regular iPhone refreshes now I think this is flat-out wrong this does not sound right to me and the idea of Apple kind of launching five new iPhones for 2019 sounds very bizarre and I still think there's a heavy chance that Apple is just manufacturing prototypes. They're manufacturing 2018 designs with the A13 chip so that they can test them and then they're also designing multiple triple camera setup iPhones so that they can test the cameras on those. I still don't believe the design has been finalized or the lineup has been finalized which is what is confusing a lot of the leakers but regardless I don't think what we're talking about today is going to happen. I'm just here to tell you what the current leaks are and what Makatakara is saying, which is essentially this. We're going to see a very simple refresh for the current existing iPhone XS, XR, and XS Max. He's claiming all of those three iPhones, of course, will be continued to be sold in 2019 and 2020 with updated A series of chips. So as you see the XS, the XR, XS Max right now, you'll see those again come September time, except all of them will be with an improved A13 chip. Design-wise, not much would be changed. He didn't bring this up, but I think there's a possibility the whole lineup could get smaller notches and there's also a good amount of evidence to suggest the refreshed iPhone 10R which would now be called the iPhone 11R will have a dual camera on the back instead of just the single lens setup so the whole lineup is getting a basic refresh alongside two brand new iPhones that will be separate from that regular trio that we got last year and these two new iPhones are going to ship with a 6.1 inch OLED display and a 6.5 inch OLED display which are quite similar in size and it makes me wonder why people are believing they would choose those different sizes because if you hold an iPhone 10R and you hold it next to a 10S Max you'll notice that probably the biggest difference is the size of the bezels on the 10R but in regards to screen size they're very very close so for Apple to make two different tier iPhones with the same camera the same displays the same technology on the inside I think that's a little bit too close and it's more likely Apple wants to have a more diverse lineup where the different sizes and different configurations are noticeably different different and not that close, which is another reason I kind of doubt the validity of this rumor. But to add into the confusion, OnLeaks has also claimed that the triple camera setup is not going to be exclusive to any of the new iPhones dropping this year. He's claiming that even the regular 11, the 11R, and the 11 Max are all getting triple cam setups, which makes me scratch my head and go, what are you talking about? You're saying we had a lineup where you had dual cameras on the premium models, and then on the budget model you had one camera. Now you're gonna have an entire lineup where, whether you be premium or budget, you'll always get the triple camera? 
I mean, maybe. <laughs> I guess that could happen, but to me that just sounds bizarre. I don't see that happening, and someone here is wrong. I'm not sure who it is, but someone here is wrong. That's not the end of the leaks, though, from Makatakara. He also brought up that the Cassie and the design of the triple camera iPhones coming out are going to be slightly thicker to accommodate this larger camera module. Yes, that ugly-looking asymmetrical corner that could be coming to this year's iPhones. The camera bump won't be as thick as we're used to right now. I'm very happy about this, because for the longest time, camera bumps on iPhones have just been getting thicker and thicker and thicker, and every single year, I keep saying, I hope they slim that down. I hope they can get rid of that. This is the first time we've ever gotten leaks or reports. This is the first time we've gotten reports that Apple's trying to thicken the device. That way, the camera bump can be less obnoxious, less obtrusive, and while it's not going away entirely, it'll definitely be a lot more smooth and a lot more uniform, which I think is a good move, particularly if it's going to look as ugly as everyone's concept art is making them look. But I get it. There's a ton of you who are fine with it. There's a ton of people out there that are like, I don't see the problem with the giant camera bump on the back. Those people are called weirdos, but they exist and I respect you and thank you for watching my videos. We just disagree. It's okay. It's fine. But regardless, what you can take away from today's leaks is that you should certainly expect at least one iPhone this year to ship with a triple camera lens setup and it's most likely going to be an ultra wide lens. That seems to be the way the industry is going and that seems to be where Apple's hoping to catch up, but also really hoping this year that they can shrink down on that notch a little bit just because the competition has been trying so hard to shrink down on notches and intrusions and make them less intrusive and make the display more immersive whether it be Galaxy S10 camera hole or OnePlus 6T teardrop notch everyone else is trying to shrink down on that notch so I'm hoping that in 2019 at least all of these iPhones even if the basic 5.8 inch iPhone 11 which isn't really going to have a lot of design changes other than the A13 chip on the inside which again isn't a design change but that would be it hopefully at least the notch on the front could be a little bit smaller so that people could recognize, okay, that's the 2019 model. I can tell physically that it's a different iPhone. But the most confusing part of all this comes down to pricing. If they are going to continue releasing smartphones that basically look the same as our current lineup of iPhones, just with updated CPUs, are you going to keep charging the same price for all of those different iPhones? Because in that case, I think a lot of people would be upset. They want a year to go by and have the current lineup of iPhones get a lot cheaper and more affordable. So if you're still going to be selling a dual camera 5.8 inch iPhone 11 in 2019, maybe start that at $900 instead of a thousand. And if you're just getting an iPhone 11 Max with the same dual camera on the back, but it has an A13 chip, maybe you could charge a thousand dollars instead of 1100, just because we've kind of had that technology for a long time. The A12 chip is plenty fast. So waiting a year just so you can up the CPU to an A13, which I'm sure will be plenty fast, but is that really going to warrant? a price jump for a lot of people? I don't think so. So if Apple expects their hardware to sell, hopefully Mac Takara is wrong about this. There also leads to the potential that the triple camera options that he's referring to could go along with a leak we got earlier that the triple camera setup would be something available to higher storage options, which I really don't like the idea of. But Makatakara's leaks does line up with this idea a little bit. If you do think about it, it would kind of make sense. He's saying that the triple camera setup is separate from the rest of the lineup's refresh in regards to you being able to spend a certain price on the 64 gigabyte iPhone 11 Max, which will stick with the standard dual camera, a 13 chip, but then once you upgrade to the 256 gig model and you're willing to pay that higher storage, then you will get a triple camera setup on the back because you clearly are an iPhone Pro user, meaning you're willing to pay to get those extra features and because you want all those extra lenses that means you'll probably need this extra storage for all those pictures and videos you're going to be taking. While I can see that viewpoint I think it's a bad idea for one just the cases out there are going to be so confused. You're going to have an iPhone 11 Max case for 64 gigabyte models and then you're going to have a 256 gig iPhone 11 Max case which will have to be designed differently to accommodate for that bigger design and that bigger camera bump on the back and cases are just going to confuse people now. So I really recommend Apple, if anyone who works there is watching this, don't do that. It's going to confuse the crap out of people if you have different camera options for different storage options. I heard that rumor once and I was like, no, 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 please don't let that be true. And also I don't think that's going to end up happening, particularly if Mechatakara ends up being correct that there's a 6.1 inch OLED model because that is more in aligned with the iPhone 11 R, which has a 6.1 inch display, but it's LCD. So I don't think they would make sense that for a certain storage, 
storage, you get LCD and a dual camera. And then for an extra storage, you get an OLED display and a triple camera. That's too drastic. They wouldn't put the same branding, the same naming on both of those iPhones. So yeah, I wouldn't expect that to happen. It's just one of those horrible worst case scenarios I thought I'd bring up. Hopefully that can bring your hopes down. That way when the actual thing comes out, it's not that bad and you can be a little bit happy. One interesting fact that I thought I'd bring up was he's claiming any of the triple camera setups you get, which are likely to be whatever these pro oriented, more higher end storage, higher end price iPhones out there. If you spend your money, if you spend your money on a triple camera iPhone, they will get an 18 watt USB-C charge brick included with the device. Now, I know a ton of people out there are like, well, Drew, what's going to happen when they ship a fast charger? Even though I told you all I would be perfectly fine with it because I don't care that much about my iPhone's longevity, given I buy a new iPhone every single year. To me, it makes sense that for the basic iPhone upgrades, whether it be 11R or the 5.8 inch iPhone 11, they get the five watt charge brick because if you're spending on the lower tier models, you probably aren't really into new features, new iPhones coming out every single year. Whereas if you are willing to spend the 1200, the 1300, the $1,400 on an iPhone, that likely means you're willing to buy a new iPhone every single year. You want the latest, greatest features, which means, yeah, you get a fast charger included because you're likely going to buy the 2020 iPhone as soon as it comes out. I can see where that mentality may go. Like the higher tiered iPhones will get fast chargers and the lower tier ones won't just because they know that people buying the lower tiers probably are probably buying their iPhones just because they need a new one, not necessarily they want the best one possible. So kind of divvying it up that way, I, I can sort of get it, but at the same time, I'm sure there's confusion. I'm sure there's people out there watching this that are like, that makes no sense. How dare they ship the fast charger for the more expensive models? I get it. I understand the frustration. Personally, I'm just happy to get USB-C to a lightning cable in the box, which is all I wanted anyway. And like I said, I don't plug anything into my iPhone. So as nice as it would be to include an 18 watt charge brick in the new iPhones, I likely wouldn't end up using it to charge my iPhone because I charge everything inductively. I'd probably just take that charge brick and use it for my iPad every once in a while. But yeah, they're kind of just rewarding people who are willing to spend all of that extra money on an iPhone. But the arguments of including a fast charger, I'm sure would not go away because everyone's just going to say a thousand dollars. You should get a fast charger for that. $750. You should get a fast charger on that. I get it. I get it. I understand you're mad. Lots of people dislike that video, as I said would happen. But for today, I'm just the messenger. I'm not explaining anything. That's what the current leaks are. They are subject to change. Take everything, of course, with a giant melon sized grain of salt. And also earlier, there was a light rumor or a light leak of people saying that Apple's going to refresh the iPhone SE so that it has a bezel-less design and it has face ID, but they also said it wouldn't have wireless charging, which doesn't make sense to me. But I kind of followed the idea of an iPhone SE refresh last year, like a wild goose chase, and it never resulted in anything. It just flat out stopped happening. So I'm not going to get my hopes up too much. And also, I think right now, with the current size of notches on our iPhones, you couldn't really put a notch or face ID on an iPhone the size of the SE. It wouldn't be a notch at that point. It would just be kind of a giant forehead, which I think would look a lot different from the rest of the iPhone lineup. So I imagine it would make more sense if Apple waited until they could shrink the notch down until it was a lot thinner. And then once the notch is more thin and small, then you can refresh the iPhone SE and have a face ID and have a more iconic look with the rest of the lineup. But personally, I still don't think the small iPhone's happening. I didn't believe the leak as soon as it said that it wouldn't have wireless charging because Apple's going all in on wireless. Makes no sense to me that they would release a even lower priced phone without wireless charging at this point. So I don't see it happening. Not that I don't want it to happen. I certainly would love to see an iPhone SE refresh or an iPhone 10e as a lot of people thought it would be called. But yeah, I don't see it happening. Though I want to hear what you guys think of all these rumors that I planted in your brains today. All that good stuff. Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.